Here's our results from our second experiment with double the trials. Good. All right, let me come back here. Matt, say that nice and loud, man. Over time, it went with the coin flip. Over time, it went to fifty percent, roughly. Hopefully, this will give you guys. I hope this will give you guys a nice graphic. I don't know why that says that right there. It's, that's strange. Oh, you don't have to see. Good. Don't worry about that. Uh, this is a computer simulation of rolling the dice you guys just rolled. I want you to kind of sit back and take it in for a second. Uh, up there in cell B4, you see B4 up there? It says pips on current roll. Mm -hmm. What that's going to do is that's generating a random number between 1 and 6. So right now I'm rolling 3. So that's the same thing as you guys taking a die and throwing. Actually, everybody right here, everybody take one die and roll. <laughs> one die and roll. Right? How many of you got three? About five or six of you? One, two, three, four, five. That. Roughly one sixth of you, right? Roughly one sixth of you got three, which is what should happen. There's about 30 of us in the room. So that's what happened there. That's what happened right there. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, what it's going to do is every time I press the F9 button, it's going to roll again. This is called a Monte Carlo simulation. Take 243 with me. I do this all the time. It's, it's a really, this is what flight simulators do. This is what flight simulators do. The pie chart right there colors to show you the cumulative total fraction of all the numbers. So right now, it's got one roll in its memory. So of the one roll, it was one three. So 100% of the pie chart is green. Kind of boring. Kind of boring. OK, so let's roll again. Let's roll again. Here's F9. OK, this time we roll a four. So now of the two total rolls, the two trials, we saw a three and we saw a four. So half the results were three, half the results were four. That's all you're seeing there. Kind of boring. Let's roll again. What did we just see? 30. We just saw, 30. oh, here it is. We saw a one, right? There's the one. So now they're all a third because of the three trials, we had a one, we had a four, and we had a three. Let's roll again. We got four. What did we just add? We just added a five. We just added a five. Let's roll again. Oh, we just added a six. Let's roll again. We just added another six. So now we've rolled six times. We've seen in those six rolls two sixes, a five, a four, a three, and a one. So two hasn't shown up yet. As a matter of fact, I would be highly surprised if you roll a die six times and you got one each of the six. Everybody try it right now. Try it right now. Take your die, roll it exactly six times. Let me know if anybody in here gets one of each of the numbers. Exactly one time each. There is a way. Oh, let's go with you. Good, good, good. So if you roll doubles at any time, you can stop rolling because it's not going to work. Okay? You got to roll six times? Did anybody roll all six numbers? One, one each of all six numbers. It's extremely hard to do it. Somebody said, Kate, you said something brilliant about an hour ago. You said it's possible but highly unlikely. It is possible for us to roll one of each of the numbers over the first six, but highly unlikely. So when you're trying to explain to somebody what one sixth means, be careful. Don't say that a probability of one sixth means every six rolls you'll get one one, one two, one three, one four, one five, or one six. Don't say that because that's not what it means, does it? It means something like that, but it doesn't mean that in general. We're about to see what it does mean. What do you think, Echo? I don't know what Farkle is. Okay. You'll have to explain it to me later. Ben, it's a dice game. Explain it to me later. Ben, what do you, what do you what's on your mind? Calculate the probability of having... Exactly one of each? Yeah. It's 720 over 46,656. It's roughly, it's less than 1%. It's around 1%, I believe. It's a, it's a 243 question. The question was, what is the chance of actually getting one of each of the, of the five numbers. So going one, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one, one, three, four, six, five, two. There are 720 ways for it to happen. You have six choices for the first. Then on the next roll, you have to roll one of the five you haven't rolled already. On the next roll, one of the four you haven't rolled. The next roll, one of the three. The next roll, one of the two. And the last roll, one of the one. And the way you put all that together is multiplication. Six times four times three. Six times five times four times three times two times one. The total number of ways to roll is 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. So it's 
6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 6 to the 6, which comes out to be, I believe, about a 1% chance. Everybody do it again. You know what? Everybody do it again. Roll 6 times again. Kurt, go ahead. Let's come back to that, Kurt. I love this question. Kurt asked a very good question. What are the chances of rolling off six twos? We'll come back to that, my friend. Did anybody get one of each that time? Almost. Good. Me too. Almost. Exactly right. Almost. Do it again. Do it again. I'm curious if we can force it. We might be able to force it. It's 700 out of about 44,000, which is, yeah, 1%. So yeah. If, we, if we, Kelly got it. Kelly got it. Anybody else get it? Now, the reason why I had you do it repeatedly is because of what Ben asked me. Ben asked me, what is the chance of it happening? The chance of it happening is 720 out of that 44,000, blah, 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 blah. That's about 1%. 1% means one out of, a, out of 100. There's about 30 of you in the room. If I keep having you do it, we'll eventually get about 100 trials, and then on average, we should hit one out of 100. It was a crapshoot, because it averages to one in 100. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen every 100, as we just saw, but it did work this time. Let's go to Vegas. We did no, we just used all of our odds. Go ahead, Matt. We did like 50, there's like 30 people in the class. Roughly, yeah. So like, we did like 90 people. Roughly, almost 100, which means we were expecting yeah. that one to hit. Yeah. Does that make sense? Now, friends, what I want to do is I want to drive home that one stick. Oh, Kirk, you asked a question. Kirk, asked a question. What's the chance of, say, rolling all twos? So let me ask you a question, Kirk. Is your question, what's the chance of rolling all twos or all the same number? All the same number. Okay. What's the chance of rolling all the same number? How many ways can that happen? What do you think, Ben? There are six ways for it to happen. All ones. All twos, all threes, all fours, or all sixes. That's tip one. All fives, there we go. I only have five fingers. There, six ways out of the same 44,000, whatever I said it was before. Very, very rare. The chance of rolling all twos, of course, is one sixth as small as that. One out of 44,000, blah, 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 blah. What do you think? Great, great question. Kate, go ahead. Exactly. You have five dice, yeah. right? Which is essentially like rolling one die five times. Yeah. Same exact thing. No difference. No difference whatsoever. So friends, I want you to tell me where the one sixth is as you watch me roll these dice over and over and over again. And while you're while you're looking, I want you to kind of it's a little bit weird. I usually use the stapler to hold this down because I get some more. But, <laughs> My You're getting closer. I'm getting closer to what? To get them all being even. <laughs> Matt just said I'm getting closer to them all being even. If they're all, how many even? How many pieces are there? Six. There are six. If all the pieces are even, what does that mean? Each of the pieces is one in six. One in six. My friends, what I want you to look at. There's some. There's some. There's some shorthand lingo there that might be a little bit confusing. The first column, x equals pips. That's the same as r1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are outcomes. The next column over is just keeping track of what's happening in the current roll. They're going by very quickly. We are now over 1,600, 1,700. We're coming up on 1,800. We've already eclipsed the number of rolls we did in this class today, right? We only did, like, what, like 300? Well, actually, we did about 1,000. But we're already at double that. We're at 2,000 right now. So the column over from that is the cumulative column. That's keeping track of how many ones, how many twos, how many threes, how many fours, how many fives, and how many sixes. And the column next to that. What does that mean? What, what does what mean? Go ahead. The column next to that? The column next, the P of X column is the <laughs> probability column. In other words, it's taking the number of ones that you got and dividing it by how many times we've rolled. We've rolled about 3,000 times right now, over 3,000 now. I'm going to stop it at uh, 3,600. I'm going to stop at 3,600 because I really want to analyze what Matty just said. He said these are really starting to look even, aren't they? These are really starting to look even. I'm going to stop at 3,600. Make sure I do this right. Because I want it to be exactly... There. There's 3,600, friends. Now, out of 30... This is like you guys doing your experiment three and a half more times. Or two and a half more times. How many ones should we have gotten? 
expected if the dice were falling precisely, exactly one sixth of the time. One sixth of it, which would be 600 each. We get 600 ones, 600 twos, 600 threes, 600 fours, 600 fives, and 600 sixes. And each of those 600 divided by 3600 would be exactly one sixth. So these look like one sixth each. They sure as hell do, don't they? That's because, let's compute the error. Look at these numbers, friends. Are they exactly 600? No, none of them are. But look, that's close, 605. What I want to do over here, let me do a little error column, OK? I'm going to do a little error column, just like we did over there, over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the value that we got cumulatively, OK? Oops, whoops, got that over here. Equals. I'm going to take the value that we got cumulatively, subtract from it the 600 that we were expecting, and divide it by 600. Is that OK? You see what I'm doing right here? OK, enter. I'm going to drag that guy down. Two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, sorry. We've got two, we've got to re-randomize. There we go. There's our errors, friends. There's our errors right there. Now notice how small they are compared to the lumpy errors we were getting over here. They're very small compared to ours. Why are they very small? We've got so many more rolls, the idea of the probability is beginning to settle in to one sixth. That one six does not promise us that every six rolls we're going to get a one and then a two and then a three and then a four. It doesn't promise us that. But it does promise us that over time, one sixth of the time, we're going to get ones. And one sixth of the time, we're going to get twos. And one sixth of the time, we're going to get threes. And one sixth of the time, we're going to get fours and so forth and so on. You guys buy that logic? That's what it promises us. It doesn't. Think of the, think of the coins on the board yesterday. There were goofy runs of heads and tails, weren't there? Bunch of heads, bunch of tails. Sometimes we went heads, tails, heads, tails, but not very often. But when you look at all the heads and all the tails, it was about half and half. Same as this. We have no idea how these are falling and what order these are falling. But after a while, let's let it keep going. Let's let it keep going, clear this out. Let's just let this thing do its thing. After time, what's going to happen? Each of these is getting closer and closer to one-sixth of this. That's what probability means. Probability, the fraction that a probability means, says on average, this event is going to happen this often. It doesn't tell you when it's going to happen. It doesn't tell you how many times in a row it's going to happen. It tells you on average it's going to happen this often. But, on average. Go ahead, Lynn. But eventually they all will become Yes. Equal. What define eventually? Eventually. Define it. How long is that? <laughs> Forever. That's the definition of eventually. As n goes to infinity. This has to get infinitely large in order for them to be perfectly equal. But the question is not can we get perfectly equal to it? When? It's can we get close enough? It's like the exponential regression. You're never going to get to zero, but are you going to get close enough to be arguably there? Yes, that's the idea. Look at these percentages, friends. Look at those decimals right there. 0 0.16, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.17. What are they just about equal to? 0 0.16. Let me back out some more decimals here. Hang on. Stay clear. Let me bump this out. Let me increase some decimals. Let me get this one. Oh, nope, that's this one. There. There's some more decimals. There's some more decimals right there. Notice, friends, notice. Can it for me, stay with If I can learn how to program in DBA, this would be much, much easier. I want some cakes like that. I'm kidding. Notice. Notice the decimals over here are changing quite a bit, but the ones right here are changing very slowly. That's because they're starting to hone in on that first point. What is one sixth as a decimal? Do you know? Go ahead. 0.16666 repeating forever. <laughs> so what's sorry, Amy, that's a terrible joke. So what's happening is what's, what's happening is as we let this get larger and larger, eventually, as Lynn says, these numbers right here are gonna eventually all become 0.16. And if you wait long enough, the next six is gonna pop up. And if you wait long enough, then so you're gonna keep adding sixes the longer you let the thing run. The thing is, the sixes will never get to sixes infinitely because infinity is a direction, not a number. So that's the question is. How close do we get until we get close enough to actually say, okay, it's one sixth? I'd say we were there about 5,000 ago, 
right? As soon as Maddie said, oh, look, the six pieces actually look like they're all the same now, we were there. We were arguably at one-sixth. We were arguably at one-sixth. The beauty of it is the longer we let it run, the less the error pops in, the less error we have. That's the beauty of it. Oh, so that's why they say in polls? Margin of error. Yeah. The margin of error, yes, the margin of, exactly. The more people, the, light, the smaller that margin of error is exactly, Lynn. Very nice. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys buy that logic? So what does probability mean when you see a probability, a percentage, or a fraction, or a decimal? What does it mean? Does it mean that, so say the probability is one-fifth. Does that mean if you do something five times, it's going to happen once? No. Does that mean if you do it ten times, it's going to happen twice? No. Does it mean if you do it fifteen times, it's going to happen three times? Four. What does it mean? If something happens one-fifth of the time, what does that mean? On average, Penelope, it happens one-fifth of the time. If it happens one-fifth of the time and you get a whole bunch in a row, does that mean your probability is wrong? No. We just saw that, didn't we? You guys were getting large numbers of sixes and ones, but what happened to them? Out by somebody else who didn't get enough sixes and ones. The too much and the too little averaged out. The average is like a share. It's like a sharing of it. So when you get, how often have you heard people say this to you? How many of you heard people say, what are the chances of that? Now you can tell them. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. What are the chances of me and you having the same birthday? I don't know. How many people have I met in my life that doesn't have the same birthday? <laughs> so the chances are pretty good that eventually when it does, right? Does that make sense? The chances are pretty Have we done the birthday problem in this class? Have we, have we tried to match birthdays in this class? No. Remember this? Let's, let's try to match birthdays. Give it, hold that question. Hold that question. Who was born in January? January, give me days. Days? 25? Nine. Nine? Oh, but there's just two. Okay. Oh, no. I'm not for a year, just day. Oh, go ahead, January. 24 and 25. Damn close. 24. February? February? Eight. Sixteen? Sixteen. Boom! Keep going. Say it again. 27. Pretty close to 16. We've got an exact match. Marches? 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 We got. There we go, Katie. Turning first. First. April. 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 We got Kate. Third. Third. Oh, third. Yeah. Oh, the ninth. Oh, the ninth and third. Okay. Uh, May. 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 Twenty-five. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. I love this. Seven. Seven. June. Twenty-eight. Third. Third. Eight. Eight. Eleven. Eleven. Seventeen. Seventeen. Twenty-second. Very close. Very close. Uh, July. We're in the Roman Emperor month now. So I have enough no match for you, Jennifer. I'm sorry, no match for you. Oh, we do. We think six, six and ten. August, August. Greg, Sydney. Five. Five. Shana, go ahead. Twenty-third. Five. Five. Second match. Boom. Uh, September. September. Or September. October. October. Kurt. Twenty-first. Twenty-first. Eight. Eight. October 5th for years was thought to be the most popular birthday. Almost to the day nine months after New Year's Eve. <laughs> November! <laughs> November! 29th? 29th? Yeah. Chris, what do you got? 28th? 29th? 17th? 25th? And December, December birthdays. <laughs> Kelly, no match for you, I'm sorry. But that doesn't matter. I always Because. I know, it's a birthday for most. But check it out. We have what? 30 people in the room? 30 people and we have two birthday matches. Is that surprising? Say that again. End of birthday in September. What are the odds of that? Very good. Because randomness clumps. Because randomness clumps. I would be surprised. I would be more surprised if with 30 people in the room, every single one of you had a birthday 12 days apart from everybody else which would be the equally spaced birthdays. 30 of you over 360 days would mean each one of you would be born if we forced spreading 12 days apart from each other. January 1st, January 13th, January 26th, February, whatever that would be. I would be more surprised with that. I'm not surprised at all. There's almost a 50% chance that with 25 people in a room, we're gonna have at least one birthday match. We had just over, just over that, we had two matches. The odds are pretty good. So when next time you hear that, what are the chances? Pretty good. Pretty pretty good indeed. Look at this. Of you having the craziest dreams, like work dreams. You know how like people have serving dreams, like that work in like restaurants. Sure. They have like they have I, I, I have crazy have teaching dreams. Crazy yeah. teaching dreams. I do. Plus like, climbing dreams. Numbers, 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 like dreams. I mean, just, yeah. Yeah. It's part of my disease. Ram. Yeah. Very faulty. That can be six ram. Yeah. 
Hang on, my friends. I got a question over here. I want to hear it. Go ahead, Lynn. Okay, so what are the chances that they'll grow in all the places? Okay, of your 10, the question Lynn has just asked is different. She got like six sixes out of 10, which is pretty unlikely. But not when you view it in the grand scheme of 300 rolls. It's actually very likely. However, in your 10 rolls, having six sixes in your 10 rolls is actually fairly unlikely. That's called the binomial distribution. The answer, the quick answer, is 10 choose 6, 1 6 to the 6 times 5 6 to the 4th. Yeah, I know. That wasn't very satisfying, I know. That wasn't very satisfying. Don't worry. There is a formula to compute it. Take 243 with me. We'll talk about my chicken coop, and we'll understand how to answer that question. I promise you. Or just come visit me in office hours sometime. We'll go over. No, I'm not allowed to because of load. I'm not allowed to, unfortunately. 